by air yeah, because they will be running, returning from work in the UK and so they would be traveling and they wouldn't be able to join very well. But let me go on straight on to the point. The Wood would remember clearly that uh, I made a journey to, the, uh, to Nigeria, spending from my pocket in order to convince the government, uh, the systems to change the paradigm in the management of H hepatitis patients. We had a very big meeting that was very promising. And uh, there was a follow-up meeting that the Wood represented the Worthy Works Limited at the Ministry of Health. Uh, and which actually was promising, but from that point, we did not hear much happening. And so I have been thinking seriously about how to change the practice, even if it means to start with a single hospital and expand. It was from that meeting that my eyes opened and I had some connection with the Rwandan government and I produced some e-learning platforms for them. I'm still actually relating with them and some of what I'm gonna show you maybe what they will be getting from me as well. And so without wasting time, I will show you that app, how it looks like. Okay, uh, I will start that way now. Okay, perfect. Good. Right, you can see, uh, can someone indicate that they can see that um, screen for me? The, the just leave a database. Yeah, it is, it is visible. Very good. So this is the database. It looks simple now, but just look at how it performs. When you bring your cursor here, you would I say add, add a new patient. You bring this one, it says edit and update a previous data. Here it displays all the patients that are in the database. And here it adds clinical information. And here you then add the outcome of the clinical management. And here you exit the liver database, okay? So let's come over here. This, this one is like a refresher to get back all these buttons. So it's actually interactive, gives you some kind of guidance as you go along to do things. You start here by adding a patient. You can see all of that. And so let's imagine, give me a number. For example, let's say uh, number 112. So remember that number, 112, okay? And uh, I would use my name as the patient. Uh, and then, of course, we know his smell. And uh, date of birth, you can select it quite easily here. Uh, of course, I'm a young man. And then it's, this confirmation code is intended that should hospitals desire for payment before they get patients into this database as a registration fee. When they pay, they are then given a confirmation code by the clerk or whoever, and then they present that confirmation code before it is entered, path different from the hospital number. So let's imagine my confirmation code was 2000, okay? And then you say, which type of hepatitis is it? B, C, D, and C, and, and so on. So let's say I'm B. And the date of diagnosis, you could actually get back to how long this was, and that ends up. Then you come up to the risk factor. Some of them may never know what they got into, but at least let's imagine that a family member had it. Past medical history, I'm healthy. Uh, drug history, not taking anything. And then here, I'm not drinking alcohol, okay? I may want choose to cancel this and clear this data or save it and then you click that. And they say, you have successfully added a new patient to database. Is this working? Obviously, you would not know whether it's working or not. I will, I will show you later whether it's working or not, later, as you see. So you come, you, when you finish that, you can click close here. And then you can see that the button there has disappeared giving you a chance to go on here. So you can actually get that button back by doing that, and then it comes back. Or then here, when the patient has presented to clinic or hospital, then you can enter more information here, okay? So here, remember the number of our patient was 112. Can you see that the patient has appeared, okay? 
So when you click the right number, the name, the, the number will appear with all the information. Let's imagine that circumstances have changed at the time the person is presenting and was diagnosed with hypertension. So you can say hypertension, high blood pressure on this occasion. You, have, you can update this information, okay? By putting that, and then it's successfully updated, okay? Now, at this point in the clinic, you want to see what has happened as a baseline for the patient because most patients who have hepatitis will have to go through certain baseline investigations, which the clinicians who take care of them should know. And here, you talk of the ultrasound. Let's imagine the ultrasound was normal. Uh, let's imagine I'm a normal patient, okay? Uh, blood counts also did not show uh, any abnormality. Liver function was normal. Uh, the combo test maybe suggests that I'm a carrier uh, of this virus. HIV, hmm, let's imagine I'm negative and viral load, maybe 12, in other words. And then the most recent time that that was done was 9th of November. Am I treatment naive? Yes, naive, I've not, never had treatment. And let's imagine that Dr. Dawood is my consultant, okay? And the date that this information was entered was today. Okay, let's leave it there, okay? Here, you can go on safe. And it says you have successfully saved a clinical information to just leave a database. You accept that. So it clears everything, okay? So at this point, you could either edit, if you felt some information was wrongly entered, you can re-enter things and edit, or you can clear it depending on what you want. And let's go on to the next thing. So uh, again, remember, if you want to get all these buttons back, you do that, and it comes back. Here, you can view all the patients, but let's not view them yet. I'll come back to that point. But let's go, assume the patient now comes to clinic for a full evaluation. There it is, uh, and you can see. And what was the number of the patient we said? The, 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 the number was 112, 112. Can you see that as soon as I've done that, it actually broke the number and every detail of that patient over here. So at a glance, you can see everything that we entered before, okay? So let's imagine it was today the patient came for review and he had no sign of symptoms, okay? We've said the blocks were normal. And the recent viral load was 12, wasn't it? Uh, liver imaging was ultrasound and it was normal. Sorry, my, my typing is a bit. And then at this point, we are dealing with a, a symptomatic carrier because he has not got anything more than just the simple uh, problems that people have. Okay, let's go on to summary of disease. So he's an asymptomatic, the, the, the physician will write that asymptomatic uh, carrier, okay, and management plan um, normally is to re repeat uh, tests, okay, in six months, you can put that as a management plan and follow up review in six months. Okay. And here, what is this suitable for phone consultation? Yes, so this is the point that I thought. Do patients need to really travel to hospitals for just a review of their hepatitis status? These kinds of burden may make these patients worried and they wouldn't want to come all the time. And so if there are systems by which patients can pay consultation fee and somebody now alerts the doctor and their numbers are updated for contact by telephone, they can only present a kind of an online, a kind of a telephone call and it would even improve, first of all, uh, the fact that patients will not run away to traditional healers. They will always be available to doctors who will be talking with them. And all the uh, distrust about whether or not uh, doctors are taking care of their hepatitis will be gone. All right, so let's imagine that he's suitable for it. And then, of course, Dr. Dawood is my doctor again, remember? And then at this point, I save that information, okay? It says it's saved. I could update that information as well or change it as I would like, then close this. Okay, at this point, we're coming to the outcome of clinical management, okay? But before then, okay, let, let me go to, uh, yeah, let me show you the, the view all patients. You want to see everything in that regard. 
you can see that all the patients we have entered are here. You can see, uh, and you can see my, the last person, I've entered some phantom numbers here. And you can see that uh, Dawood, Dr. Dawood is my doctor and everything that I've entered has come in here, okay? And uh, if I like, for whatever reason, to export this information to, to Excel, for example, for those of you who want to do some science, you can do that. And it has actually copied into an Excel sheet. And before that is done, usually you would want to make sure that your Excel is open. And either you can actually put it up straight, uh, of course, you can, uh, all of that information has been entered there. Okay, right. Okay, I don't want to do that at this point, but uh, I have, I'm, I'm closing that. My challenge here is that, uh, sorry, that error was, is a report that I meant to actually say so. So I will close that and then we'll come over here to refresh that, to see all the buttons again. And we've added all our clinical information. So we're coming here. Okay. We'll finish that. And then at this point, you want to look at the summary of the management plan we've given to 112. Remember your hospital number? And you can see 112. What did we say? Asymptomatic career, repeat in six months. He's the right person, isn't he? Now, here is intended that if there is a link with the pharmacies, they will see prescriptions and or summary of the patient's details and issue their prescription. How do we get that information? Okay, what did we say for this patient? He has no problems. So I have requested bloods and ultrasound in six months. Okay, any prescriptions? No. And then Dr. Dawood again uh, has been the one here. Uh, or on this occasion, maybe let's imagine Dr. Bako was must be. Uh, doctor, okay? Okay, so then we, we actually save this, okay? So it's been saved successfully. Right, so it's, it clears off, ready for the next patient. But to get things into this box, you just type that number, 112, and there you have it again, every detail we've entered. Let's imagine that for this patient, we actually wanted uh, that they should start some antiviral treatment or maybe some paracetamol. Imagine that that would be the case. So we, again, we write ultrasound and there was paracetamol. Uh, then there and one gram uh, BD or something like that. And then uh, Dr. Marco has written that. Okay. And of course we have set information on that patient. So all we do now is to update and it's successfully, successfully updated. How do we get that information again? We put 112, and we can see that the previous thing was nothing, but now paracetamol has appeared there, okay? Now, this is the kind of, and here you come to the point and then you exit the database, that goes, okay? Brilliant. Now, that is the summary uh, of the just liver database. And uh, it's, uh, it was intended to just demonstrate what is possible. And remember the background is we want to optimize care for patients about, uh, in, in Nigeria alone, about 10% of the population. That's about 200 million, that would be, 10% would be 20 million people with hepatitis B. And many of them, only about a percent or so, are aware of their diagnosis. And we have been looking for grants from Bill Gates and so on to do things, but Bill will never agree to give any money without convincing information. We don't have any rolling database where we can say, here is the number of patients who have hepatitis. This proportion are the ones who are having disease and who are unwell or cirrhosis or liver cancer. We only mourn our death whenever one person dies from this disease. We don't have anything to convince the world. Remember COVID became important because 
every day there was a documentation of who was where and what was happening in which country. But we don't know. We are living in the dark. And so I thought that getting a database, which can be clinic-based, which can be utilized of this nature, might actually provide some help. I don't know. What are the thoughts people have? I don't know if people, uh, I was too fast or quick or something, and you want me to bring it up again, I can always do it. But let me hear your comments for now. I'll stop here. You can indicate if you want to speak by uh, raising a hand or uh, you can unmute yourself and actually say what you want. Okay, so let's start with, um, let's start with Dr. Baku for now. <coughs> and then the wood afterwards. <clears throat> uh, th thank you very much, uh, Dr. Ladev. Um, I find this very useful for, for us in developing countries. I mean, um, keeping data at the health facility level can be a challenge. Retrieving them can be a challenge. Indeed. Oftentimes for us researchers, you want to do research, and then getting access to data can actually be a huge challenge. So I think that this, this app is, um, has multiple faces. Uh, they are, and an additional advantage that you can, uh, during the follow-up patients uh, may not necessarily need to come to the hospital. Yeah. Because I mean, you can just um, uh, get your, the, the patient's um, information. Yeah. Uh, I, I have a few, mm. Uh, questions that I want to ask. Number oh, yeah. one, yes, so uh, uh, for instance, in Nasarawa state, which is like a typical state in Nigeria, um, if a general hospital, for instance, want to use this, what would it take to use it in terms of as, as a routine in the hospital for hepatitis? hepatitis patients and the management of hepatitis patients. What does it take, you know, for them to institutionalize it at the head facility level? You know, uh, at the state we have, uh, all the general hospitals are under the hospital management board. Yeah. Um, so, so, so what will it take from your own end? What okay. additional support I can will, you provide? I will answer that question so that you don't, doesn't mount up before I get lost. Um, so this, this app is completely uh, without internet. I used a C Sharp and SQL database server to get this. Okay. But of course, if we're going to get a large database that will cut across many regions, we will have to put it on a server that is online. Uh, uh, ad hoc solutions can be provided. For example, if you have your own system where you want us to come and build one for you. Well, yeah. you would just take, uh, just to download the server onto your local PC and then build it up in Asia and then the, put a setup for you so that you can actually mobilize it on your PC and use it directly using the community-based server for SQL database, which is where the database is hanging. And all the information that will be available on that computer will remain on that PC all the time. But if you have it on a server that is subsisting uh, on a bigger platform like Azure or um, uh, Amazon or any of these other big names, you, you will then have to have some online connection. And of course, it just means to pay for data and then you're able to access this, uh, all this information there. Of course, a bit of training for those who use it will work properly. But I think that in the real sense of it, it will be expected that the person who is going to be the end user will have some knowledge, background knowledge of management of hepatitis so that they will know what information is being sought. But of course, you can train community persons as well, very well, and tell them, look at the tick boxes. And actually, this simplifies the way we manage hepatitis. Instead of insisting that there has to be a hepatologist, you can give them tick boxes and say, these are the things to look for. And at this level, when you see this amount, for example, I didn't take you through uh, some entries. When you enter a particular viral load, it will tell you, okay, watch out, this patient may require treatment. I didn't do that part. But if I, if I entered a, a, a figure that was beyond a point, it will alert you that this is a pre-qualification for treatment. 
in which case the person they will then be notified that you need to actually refer for treatment or start some treatment or do some evaluations for treatment. So that, that is my response to that question. Um, do you want to ask okay, the next so one? Okay, go on, go on. Go on. Let me just follow with a very quick one. Um, currently, Nasarawa State is, has set up a committee, technical working group actually, yeah. for viral hepatitis. Okay. And if you give me your permission, because yeah. I mean, this app fits perfectly well into one project that we are doing right now. Yes. Um, a viral hepatitis um, elimination program that is being embarked. Oh yes, I, rem I remember. I remember Nasrallah State did something about hepatitis C, wasn't it? Uh, but yeah. but it, this so can be. Yeah. Yes. So if you give me your permission, we, we are working with general hospitals. You know, trying to do some pilot program on, on for hepatitis, viral hepatitis C, yeah. actually, viral hepatitis. Actually, so we can we 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 I will mention this to them. Yeah. And we'll be reaching out to you. I mean, we um, we may request that you know you create a customized platform for Nasrallah State. Perfect. Um, this, this what you have can easily be modified. Yes. So we need you to to do a customized app for us, Perfect. and then uh, maybe provide a little bit of training. Now, this is just an additional request that I want to make. Uh, Wonderful, uh, Dr. Barco. I'm very I'm with you in all of your pursuit and I am up for it. This is something I would do for free, but of course you do know that if we've got to mount it on, on a server that will remain there, it has to be with a cost. So, but I am very happy that you are actually taking this up. We will be communicating privately on this. Thank you. Yes, we will. Adam, thank you. Dr. Dawood. Yes, well done, uh, Dr. Ladep. Thank you. Thank you very much for this innovation Thank you. and a very dynamic database for humanity. That's how I'll put it. In a, in to be very mind. frank, this is a welcome development because as Dr. Bako rightly said, we tend to lose data yeah. provided we are using our old system of filing, mm. documenting on papers and filing. Yeah. Indeed. Sometimes rainfall, sometimes ants, sometimes mm -hmm. insurgency, yeah. they get out in order of misuse and theft happens Indeed. in the various uh, health facilities that we have and even hospitals. Indeed. And it is so friendly, the database is so friendly and easily applicable. Mm. So the first question I have is how easily is the data is the database going to be available for use? Can anybody right. just upload it on his or her phone or system and start using? Or will there be some payments? <laughs> and then what about servicing? Because we would not like a situation where when we have actually allowed people to know that this type of very important tool is available, if I start, we start using it, we have some downfall of services. Yeah. So all these are things we have to consider. Good. So let me answer the question before you go right. to the next one. Uh, the availability, I think I did answer that uh, when uh, Professor Bapu was talking in regards to uh, how there are two ways. If, if, if we're dealing with a, a charity organization that is struggling and they just want us to have a customized database that would be separate from the main group, that's fine. I can do that for them, but it has to remain on a PC. It has to be a computer rather than uh, on a, a mobile phone. Uh, and because this is something that is clinic based, uh, and it will store very sensitive information. So you cannot, uh, people cannot have it on their mobile phones uh, because uh, there's data protection and so many things. Uh, some people have hepatitis, they don't want the public to know. And uh, so there will be lots of security aspects to it. Of course, if I showed you the customized one that I have done and which I was going to speak with uh, Judith separately on this, uh, you will have to lock in and you have to be given a special login and given some admin rights as well. 
because anybody can come in there and alter some information and you don't want that. And so this will, the availability of it will be based on collaboration. Ideally, Dawood, you know very well that we wanted this system to uh, work, is Dawood there? Because it seems it's gone. We wanted this to work for the entire country. Yes, Nigeria. I'm listening. Oh, okay, to, to work for Nigeria so that such a way that we can have a pool of all this data in a unified form that will give us a big database. That was one of the things we had uh, as what it was when we approached the Minister of Health. Uh, but however, it didn't happen. But then I know that a lot of pockets of groups of people are crying and yearning for this kind of information and, and way forward. And which is why I thought we can do this. So we will continue to support any group that approaches us uh, to build it onto an enterprise for them or to build it using uh, established platforms where we can deploy it for them. So if, for example, I build for Nasra State Government, it will be, I'll package it within a zipped file and it will be sent online. And they would all, just like you install a program, you install it onto your PC uh, as a program and, and you're up to go without really having me to travel, unless if you do need a lot of uh, technical support at some point. But that's, that's, that's a summary of it. Okay, yeah, well done. Thank you. And you see the NASCAP, that's the hepatitis uh, control program here in Nigeria. Yes. The NASCAP is the coordinating body. Have actually finished all the required data tools that have to be used for hepatitis management in the country. Yeah. They finished it last month okay. and they are about printing and to roll it out. So with this database and what they are trying to roll out, I actually invited all of them Right. So my, I don't know if some of them are here. Please, if any of the NASCAP or uh, National Hepatitis B Working Group is here, please try to indicate yourself and give a small clue of where we are now. Since I left MPSCDA, I'm not actually a member, but I still I have know. the link hey. on WhatsApp. Yes, so I'm already... I've already sent the link. So if any of the member of the, the Hepatitis uh, National Working Group is here, please try to indicate where you are with the work so that we'll be able to know how what it works limited can come into play with the new tools that we are rolling out. Let them be rolled out with this important database so that we'll not lose number of patients that we have either before care or in care. Yeah. That will really help us. So this is my suggestion finally. Thank you very much and keep the good work flying. Thank you, yes. Dr. Wood, for this. Uh, Dr. Wood mentioned about NASCA people. Uh, it's, I'm wondering whether Ocon is one. Uh, I'm not sure, sorry, if I'm getting you wrong, let me know, but I thought there would be somebody to say that they were from NASCA because I did travel and met some of you there. Uh, in the absence of any person uh, responding to that, is Otnell, you, you did have some questions to ask uh, or some people were asking questions. Do you have anything to contribute, please? The platform is yours. Uh, no. Hi, hi. Uh, thank you very much for uh, this presentation. Uh, I, I, I don't have any question really, but I, I mean, people were, people that were coming onto the meeting, they were, they were thinking probably uh, it's not beneficial for people that are patients. But I told them that, you know, you just come on because probably there may be something that you're going to say. Or yeah. probably you're going to sign, post them to what you're doing in Nigeria so that they can, some of them don't know mm -hmm. what you're already doing there already in, yeah. in Nigeria. So I thought if you can mention that, it's going to benefit them. Okay, perfect. That's fine. Um, so a lot of you, uh, if there are no questions, I will just be a bit of uh, a show again of little form a bit for uh, the way if the data works again. Uh, unless, uh, has anybody got any pertinent question that I'm going to show? I will still share my screen uh, just so that uh, some of you who came late may see what database can do. 
Uh, there it is. Uh, when you, you just hover it and it changes color, and you will then say add patient. Here, update a previous entry. Here, you can view all the patients. For example, you can do that and you can see all of them. Uh, I'm afraid, I don't know, you, you see my screen, so you will see much of better than I am seeing actually. You can scroll. The last patient we entered was myself and all that happened right through. So you can see the entirety of it. You could actually, like I said, do that. And it actually goes on to an Excel. You can paste, it just it selects everything. And then you can paste it onto an Excel spreadsheet. Uh, obviously, like I said, it's, it's not, it's still working at the moment. So it keeps thinking for some time, depending on the amount of data that is available there. Uh, for those who are new patients that you want to add, sorry, it's still, it's still thinking. Uh, maybe I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> uh, I will, uh, for if you want to add a new patient, you go there. And if, for example, you want to save, okay, without putting any number, you will refuse. And which is one of the good controls of a database. In other words, it should not work by any putting a blank. Okay, you put things and you 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 do do that and you can cancel and clear it. Okay, so it should work in that in that in that regards very perfectly. Sorry, I think I'm touching some wrong things here. Uh, and then settings here again, we you put a number. And any, any existing person can come in, will come in there straight on. Okay. Right. So one, one, K12, okay, they're all there. Remember my own name, 112, and then my name comes up there. You can update it or do anything more to it there. And you can edit or delete. For example, if you want to delete this person, it will tell you, are you sure you want to delete? In other words, should you really delete or not? So again, uh, no, I don't want to delete. But let's, I told you about getting the viral load. And if I go up to 30,000, for example, and, uh, and then let's imagine I didn't put anything more, but I'm just putting 30,000, okay? I'm saying, I'm going to say it did because I have saved some data there already before. But can you see that? It did say something that was uh, not appropriate, meaning that I've not actually put some data there. So it will not continue. Okay, and there it is, it was closed and so on. So I will have to correct some code there about it, but definitely I needed to put some information before I can edit, otherwise it would not go. Okay, and then here I did show you how to view patients. Here is a clinic, lesson number 12 now. It brings up that person, you edit and put information there and you continue with all that needs to be done and here, at the, at the end of the clinic, you put it there and it tells you this is the person and this is what should be done. Uh, 112, 111, those are previous patients that I've attempted and all that the plan for are here. If I want to update some information or treatment, I will do it there and then it brings, up, it brings it up here again. And then if there's a link with the pharmacy, then they can just go to the pharmacy. And if the pharmacy has the same database, there is no need for any paper prescription. The patient will, uh, will go there and say the hospital number. And once the pharmacy types the number, you will see the prescription. And in a robust setting, if in, within a fee-for-service uh, situation, uh, there may be fee added to it, and then the patient pays and is given the prescription and they're gone. And so really, that is it's a big dream. And I think it's achievable. And I think we're at the verge of that discovery now, and it can be done with lots of support, which is coming across from what I feel uh, this session is giving to us. Thank you very much. And I stop here. Uh, I think we've got only a few minutes. Should anyone have any further questions to ask? Hello, Plan. Did you have want to say something?
Yes, Peter Bulos, uh, unmute yourself and speak. All right, uh, thank you very much, Dr. Ladeb, for that uh, wonderful uh, initiative and uh, program. Thank so you. I, if you go to the chat uh, box, I asked the question how we could uh, access the app and, and try it. Oh, is that Peter Bulos uh, from Nasra? Yes, from Nasra State. Okay, good. I know I remember you. <laughs> how are you? Yes, Long time. I'm fine, sir. Really, yeah, I'm you really good. Thank, thank God. Thank you, sir. Right. Yes, sir. So the I did answer that question earlier, and I think Dr. Ba Professor Bako did talk about this, and I explained to him how we will work at getting it. it this is something that is based, it's a web app, and it's based only on a PC. Windows in particular. And what happens is that it will be like a program built so that you can install it on your PC. So this is just a test drive to demonstrate what this can do. And since I've got the platform to prepare and produce it, it will be available and can be actually, uh, then once we have had an order and can build it and package it, this can be shipped via a zipped file and then you get it downloaded at your own end and install on your PC. If you don't want to pay and you want maybe a lap new laptop to build it up initial within that laptop so that you can use only that laptop for that session uh, and to continue to use that laptop only for whatever you that you want because you want to save costs, that can also be done. And But of course, the challenge would be to transport that PC across to you. But those are all in the package of how the costings will be to get it right. But I don't think it's, 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 it's too expensive because you will save a stationary, you will save a lot of manpower. The patients traveling to come to hospital will be less. There will be more direction, more purpose in terms of healthcare and so on. So I think, I think that's, that's, so those are the possibilities. And so it's not, it's not something online to be done, but it's something that we can, we can be contracted and we can get it done and package it and send yes. it over. Okay, thank you very much, sir. Thank you. And the beauty is that it's actually, you can, you, you can do all of this offline. In other words, you don't need to have access to internet to put in those information. Okay, uh, there's a message down here. Sorry, I didn't get the messages on time. I'm just going through them now. Uh, thank you. Okay. Uh, okay. Some stages of the presentation. Sorry. Uh, maybe we get the app. Okay. Interesting. Uh, perfect. That's okay. Can you tell P meeting about what you're doing in Nigeria in terms of hepatitis? Yes. So yes, let me quickly say this before the time runs out on me. Uh, so we've been doing the hepatitis Nigeria network uh, systems of attacking poor information and wrong uh, ideology and social media parades or uh, advances in terms of uh, alternative care and medicine. And uh, a large group of about 12,000 participants have joined the Hepatitis Nigeria Network and where we do a lot of teaching on Facebook in particular. And uh, we also have lots of, uh, about 33 apps, majority of them on hepatitis. One of them known as Liver Health app is actually the uh, most, is a five star rated app on Google, Google Play Store. It's been downloaded about 10,000 uh, installs uh, globally. In other words, uh, Australia, US, everywhere was, is my brainchild. Uh, one of the apps that actually brought me to the fore in terms of hepatitis care. Uh, there's liver, liver nutrition as well as hepatitis B interactive uh, and several other apps in relation to the liver, uh, all out there. Even the non-invasive liver screening, uh, APRI score to look at how steep the liver is uh, to make decision about how to treat patients. <laughs> Uh, are all available on Google. So those, those are some of the efforts that I have done uh, in practice. For, for, for those who want to know where I work, I work in the north, in the eastern part of England, uh, in North, Norfolk and Norwich Hospital as a hepatologist, consultant hepatologist. 
my background, why I could do some of this share interest. Obviously, I have done a PhD in the liver cancer and also at, at Imperial College, but I did have my initial training in Nigeria. I did work at Juice before coming over here. Uh, so that, that's just about my bio, uh, bio, bio data or something, if you wish to know. But none of those things matter to me. All that I want to see change is the paradigm of care that is given to the hepatitis patient in developing country. I could go to places, but and, and like I mentioned, I've had good interaction with Rwanda. However, I still have this passion for the country I left and where I gained my formative years from. And that's why I'm still banging on the doors of Nigeria. Thank you very much. And thank you for joining me this evening. Uh, I look forward to further collaboration.